Welcome to the Orthopedic Indications channel, where we discuss medical education for medical sales consultants and reps. Welcome to Indications. My name is Nick Strasser, and if this is the first time you stumbled across our platform, this is a, uh, a platform where we focus on medical education for the medical sales reps. Um, bit of a disclosure. This is not medical advice. This is just talking through some presumed statements. Uh, everything's been changed, so we don't uh, reveal any uh, pertinent uh, information. Uh, so the scenarios are made up, but there certainly uh, could be applicable um, to uh, certain situations that would be um, potentially seen in the real setting. So we focus a lot on talking through cases and case planning. We focus a lot about, uh, for those those are you who are medical sales reps, just to kind of know what we're thinking as we get into some of these more complex cases. So this is, a, this is the final installment of our tendon transfer discussions. Um, <clears throat> we didn't get to this case when we talked last month about uh, tendon transfers, uh, but I wanted to show this case just to highlight a f more of a four-foot tendon transfer that you might be seeing um, utilized in the, um, in the operating room. So this is... Um, we're going to say this is a late 50s, early 60s female who's had long-standing pain and deformity in history of multiple surgeries. Now, it's kind of interesting to go through her past medical history. She has a history of Charcot-Marie Tooth, and um, that can result in these severe cavus or high arch feet and clawing of the forefoot, clawing of the toes. And so that's one of the conditions that we oftentimes manage in some of these cases. So in this case here, we have um, a patient who's um, been through multiple surgeries on the other side, and now she's coming for her. And then if you look at the AP x-ray, you see metatarsal stacking. So these, the, the, over, the, um, the metatarsals are almost like they're stacked on top of each other. And there's a lot of talonavicular over coverage, which would obviously be different than under coverage in the Pes planus scenario. And you can see the other side, she's had some previous surgery. You can tell that she's had a previous TTC fusion rod, which had been subsequently removed. She still has one plate left over. Uh, but she's okay on that side, but she's here. Um, and I, you know, I, I titled it as such because you see her a couple of years before this and you think, oh man, this is a, this is a big case. This is, um, take some planning and at least, um, and a lot of discussion and, and there can be potential for complications and issues that arise. So you have to really be thoughtful in your approach to this uh, type of patient. So this is her right side. It's a lateral view. So I'm not going to belabor the point for our hind foot. We could have a whole discussion on that. That's a, that's, a, that's a whole discussion. But we used a combination of a calcaneal osteotomy. We did a, um, a, a posterior tibial tendon release. We did a subtalar and CC joint arthrodesis and kind of rotated that foot around to get that plantar grade. Um, and, you know, she still has some anterior ankle impingement at the talonavicular, or not the talonavicular, at the tibiotalar joint. Uh, we also raised her first metatarsal, so we got rid of some of that increased calcaneal pitch. Now, I think if I was going to go back, perhaps uh, now I might add a tendon transfer into this case where I take the posterior tibial tendon and, and bring that around through the interosseous membrane and then attach that maybe to the uh, lateral part of the foot over to the, um, to the calcaneus or, or uh, not the calcaneus, the uh, cuboid or the lateral cuneiform just to give some added dorsiflexion. Fortunately, she had pretty good dorsiflexion, so I didn't feel that she needed it for power. It would have been more for helping rec uh, prevent any recurring deformity and to remove one of the deforming forces off the medial side. So I think that's a, that's a reasonable thing to add into uh, this particular case. But she did pretty well initially, and everything went really well. Now, I think a discussion is what do you do with the forefoot? What do you do with the toes? 
and do you do it in a stage fashion? And I think you're going to see all sorts of different um, ways of approaching it. But uh, I elected to do one side, to do the hind foot, take my t take the time to get it right, and then um, and then come back at a later date. Because that's a lot of surgery. It's a lot of insult to the foot. Uh, skin healing is not guaranteed in these settings, and so I think there's something to be said for doing the doing the hind foot, getting that right. So you're, you're correcting, you're changing, you're moving things, you're stretching the um, the put the neurovascular bundle on the medial side, and if you then stretch it again more distally as you correct the toes, I think you're asking for more uh, problems. Now I think there's uh, folks that do it all in one single setting, and I think that's completely fine, but it is something to at least consider. So this is after our first stage, but now she comes at you for uh, the forefoot and she wants something done with that. So this is what it looks like in the OR. Um, you can tell that there's a lot of clawing of her first through fifth digits. And then this is a case where we're gonna talk about, since we're talking about tendon transfers, we're gonna transfer the extensor tendon, the extensor hallucis longus, on the big toe and we are going to transfer that to the base of the first metatarsal and we're going to fuse the ip joint now this is called affectionately the jones procedure which is named for sir robert jones who some consider the grandfather of of, of orthopedic surgery from the early 1900s and same jones that would be associated with uh, fifth metatarsal fractures so here in this case um, you have this is kind of what the anatomy looks like. You have FHL on the plantar side. You have extensor hallucis longus on the dorsal side. So that gets transected distally, and that helps remove some of your deforming force. And then we're going to actually come in and do an IP fusion. So we do uh, resect the distal portion of the, of the proximal phalanx and the proximal portion of the distal phalanx. Um, and then uh, use that uh, uh, use an intramedullary screw to fix that. And then the tendon gets taken through a uh, drill hole in the base of the first metatarsal. And I'll use an interference screw uh, through the metatarsal and then I'll take, I usually have enough tendon that I can wrap it back on itself and then suture it back to itself. So now it helps pull some dorsiflexion to the first ray and helps kind of provide some correction of that deforming force. And so this is after, the, sorry for the blood, this is after the pins came out. Uh, I used, and just a quick side note on the lesser toes, two through five, I did metatarsal osteotomies, uh, MIS, I did a um, MIS joint prep and um, correction of deformity uh, of the proximal phalanx with the MIS burr, which has been a really nice adjunct because wound healing um, and uh, uh, disrupting the blood supply to these this amount of deformity is a real possibility. So being able to do it with an MIS burr, I actually think is quite helpful. You keep the tourniquet down um, and try to minimize the dissection and it seems to help with the, when it comes to the wound healing. So this is where we're at. At this point here, we get a uh, follow-up um, x-ray at, uh, I think this is probably eight, uh, 10 weeks um, after surgery. This, uh, so the foot looks plantar grade. We've corrected the first metatarsal, and you can see we got some healing osteotomies of the toes, and uh, my face is kind of in the way of the uh, uh, lateral view, but you get the idea that um, of kind of where we're at. So this is our final clinical photo at 10 weeks, and so overall, I think very pleased with those results. Now with CMT, there can be recurrence of deformity, and so that's certainly a possibility. Um, with this and you would definitely want to talk to him about that but overall I think we're very pleased with this uh, result and this is using a tendon transfer in the forefoot we call it the Jones procedure and we use it to correct that that bad clawing usually associated with a um, with the CMT or a severe cable varus foot well, hopefully, if you like uh, what we put out here, make sure you subscribe to our uh, videos, uh, check out more of our content, and uh, we'll be adding more videos as we kind of get into the summer, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So take care.